This is going to be an extremely quick video on the subject of the Ford F-150 computer in which it's necessary to replace the electrolytic capacitors. In this particular model, there are only two electrolytic capacitors, and importantly, the negatives face in opposite directions of each other. The one up here at the top is 3.3 microfarads at 63 volts and the one down here is 47 microfarads at 10 volts. I want to just tell you a little bit about voltage rating. If you can't find an exact replacement for the voltage, don't worry it. Just go to a slightly higher voltage but not a lower one and you should be okay. These uh, are marked high temperature capacitors and so you will need to replace them with the 105 degree temperature range of, of the capacitor as a replacement. Don't substitute anything else. These are not leaking. That's the important thing and the good thing. I just want to disclose the, what's the, I believe they call the tear tag up here. So that's an H1X2 and uh, there's nothing you can do with that information. It just helps you a little bit to know the genre this particular one is coated with a kind of a, a rubberized uh, silicon, so you can you can get at the circuitry. One thing I, I do want to mention is uh, electrostatic discharge, or ESD. You know, you are handling a circuit, and when you handle it, you need to be a little bit more careful than you would normally. Don't put your hands on any of the connections. And be careful when you handle this, to, when you turn it over. The soldering is very basic, and so I'll show you how to do that. Protect those pins at all costs because they cannot be bent or misshaped in any way. The good news is, as you see in the bottom right corner there, and also in the bottom left corner, there's a keyway for the connector to go in. You cannot plug it in improperly. It will not work. So that's one good thing about it. A quick note on reassembly before I forget. This rubber scutcheon is very important to reinstall. And good news is it's marked top on mine. I don't know. I would hope that it is on yours. This is the inside and this is the outside. So keeping it up and, you know, having it fit correctly around the connector uh, is an important thing. Just thought I'd mention that so that when you go to put it back together, if you've forgotten how it went, this will just help you to remember. You'll need a few basic things if you don't already have them. I just happen to. I've got the wick for the solder. I've got a solder sucker. Any one of them should work. Some solder. And of course, uh, your choice of soldering iron. You need very little power to do this with. So uh, a lot of you guys probably have a nice soldering station. I just have an old style kind of, you know, uh, back in the old days type uh, replaceable cartridge soldering iron. But it's pretty good. And just a little bit of heat. And then using this uh, solder uh, sucking uh, equipment, uh, you know, especially the braid, that's going to actually do better, I think, than the sucker will. There's not much solder on that connection, so it should come pretty easily. One bit of bad news I had in getting the computer out of the slot on, on this side, uh, which is, you know, your 96 truck. I had to cut through the internal cowling wheel well uh, plastic material. I used a moto tool to do that with. I'm going to repair that after I reinstall by taking the um, RTV and then filling in those cracks so water can't come rushing up in there. I really tried what someone else suggested to, to do uh, to you know disassemble that internal cowling and move it uh, downward. I was unable to do that in this truck. And frankly, they put that in after the engine is in and, um, you know, before they put the wheels on. And, you know, you can't undo enough things. I, I tried. But uh, anyway, just to be aware of that, you may not have the space that you'll need to take the computer out safely unless you do that. Make sure the battery is disconnected before you do anything. That's your first step. I'm getting ready to replace this 47 microfarad by 10 volts with the 47 microfarad 16 volt and you can see there's an appreciable difference in the can size so don't let the can size fool you you might not be able to find an exact part it doesn't matter the size it just matters the rating and of course the temperature rating of 105 you want that so let's get on the back side and start desoldering we're working on capacitor c7 so says the other side of the board 
before I apply any heat or anything, I'm just going to see if I can remove a little bit of that silicon rubber that they've put, coated this thing with. And uh, this will make it go a little bit better for the desoldering. And I, I wouldn't spend a lot of time with it. And don't touch anything on the board you don't need to touch. So now I'm going to use this little piece of uh, braid. And that's the way I think it's going to work. I'm going to first try to get the, as much solder off the connection as possible without touching anything else. And then... We'll see if we can move the part a little bit and then get the rest of the solder off. That took some. This gets a little hot here too. Definitely gets hot. You'll have to let go of it. Then with this solder aid, I'm going to, you can see it's exposed a little bit better now. I'm going to go one more time and then bend the leads a little bit and then I'll reach under and pull the C7 capacitor out, 47 by 10 volt that we'll replace. It's definitely trial and error to take the braid and get it on there, heat this up, and bend the lead out straight each time. And then I've got a hold of it underneath and I'm rocking it back and forth a little bit, but it's still it's going to take some time to take that out. I've now replaced capacitor C7. And I've decided the best thing to do to prevent any kind of uh, mistake is to go ahead and uh, button this all up and reinstall the computer and test it immediately, just in case there's some sort of mistake that was made. We'll see. And then we'll go on to the next uh, assignment, which is capacitor C2 over here. But we'll first test this just to be on the safe side. I'm going to clean up the work with a Q-tip and some alcohol on it just to daub and see can I pick up any junk that's left over. Later, I'm going to come along with uh, a little bit of clear lacquer to just brush on. But first, I'm going to test. Okay, so I've got it here. I didn't really, really reinstall it, but it is working. I'm going to look for some codes. I don't see any codes. So the first capacitor for right now is working. One thing I'm noticing though is uh, I had this problem with the P0122. This uh, model of truck has the hard line uh, to the uh, throttle body. It doesn't have the uh, electronic uh, pedal connection. This is where the hard line connects for the throttle body. There's a, a sheath in there. It's not electronic. C7 replacement verified, so now let's go to C2. I'm having quite a bit of problem uh, with the desoldering of this capacitor C2. I got the soldering tip down in there. I heated from the top side and rocked this part back and forth. Then I heated from the bottom side and finally it popped loose while I was holding on to it and pulling. One of the holes is now completely clear. I can actually put a new lead through there, but I've still got to desolder the other hole. Uh, overall, okay, and just do a little bit of cleanup and I should be okay. Finally, I've got the new capacitor in there ready to be soldered. Just about through with it. When you are through soldering, make sure that the solder has come up through the board and that you see a flow on the top side for a connection like this. If you don't see that kind of cone coming up, then the solder didn't uh, flow enough. You need to reheat it on this particular board because this is the only contact on this side of the board. Clean up any loose uh, spatter with uh, Q-tips and alcohol, being careful not to touch anything you don't need to touch. Just get down there and get anything loose. I'm going to touch up the connections with a little bit of this silicon um, caulk. It's like the expensive 50-year kind. And then just daub on a little bit, let it cure, and then that should protect it from any elements. Okay, reinstalled for 
capacitor C2 test. Put lights on. Okay. Let's go around and see if it'll crank. Oh, let's see what happens. test drive so one thing I'm noticing is the brake light is on right now with the parking brake set that's good it's not always that way I thought maybe something was you know out of whack with that and uh, so we're kind of idling now let's let's try to idle idle up and then let it come back down not staying up so that's good well let's go for a little ride let's see what happens just a little ride around the block Seems to be okay. Sort of gun it a little bit. If you're still watching, thanks. It's kind of boring. But when you get into the repair of one of these things, you better be ready for plenty of disappointment and boredom and time spent. Now, there are other videos of guys doing this, but uh, to each his own, you know. I'd say it's working pretty well. I'm sitting here at a light and uh, it seems like the idle may be a little bit high. Let's try going on down the street and then we'll pull up to a stop sign again. It's kind of hard to shift and hold the phone at the same time. And then we'll come to a stop and see do we get that high idle again. Now that's the symptom that I had that started causing me to think something was out of whack. I cleaned the butterflies inside the throttle body and uh, I couldn't make the P0122 go away completely. So we're going to come up to a stop here. I don't know that this is a good test. We'll try it. We'll come to a stop and see do we idle down for a second. I can't really tell 
But I'll tell you what, I'm going to observe and then check the codes and then find out that way. Now we're going to go and see can we come to a stop up here and do we get the idle, the high idle. I'm just going to pull over. Well, that seems normal. But the uh, codes, I'm going to see if there are any pending codes when I get back to the house. One of the hardest parts is to get the computer back in again. As you can see down there, I cut that plastic cowl that has to be repaired. But if you get it this far, you're doing pretty well. It's back in there now, so my advice is don't over-tighten that bolt that holds the terminals, that uh, assembly, the plug assembly, just tight enough so it's snug. Of course, you did all of this with both battery terminals off. Really important, don't have any current going through it. All right, here we go. Computer's installed. Let's try it. Kind of hard starting. Don't let any water or anything drip on that computer. I know this is funny, there was some drips on the hood here. I think it'll idle down. It usually does okay on this part of it. Just a surprise in traffic where it stays high. I can tell from here. I meant this video to be short and it ended up, ended up being much longer. Now you hear the uh, diverter valve has closed and uh, we're still at a little bit of high idle here. I'll just have to go with it. I'll update anybody I can. If you have some comments or something, let me know. Thanks for watching.